Okay, so as you can see, we've got the engine done, um, and on the close-up, we just bring it in a little bit more. You can probably see we've got this nice piece at the top. It's quite well detailed. Take your time with it, and it goes together just as it says on the old box, so to speak. Um, but if you do sort of get ahead of yourself on that, um, you end up putting things in wrong places and bits pieces like that. Now, this bit isn't actually fixed on yet. It's literally just pushed in the holes. Um, because obviously there's lots more detail and we're going to spray all this up and everything. But what we need to do is check how it's going to look when it's in. So if we just open up the bottom, and obviously we've got those slats in there and things, so it all lines up. So if we just pop a rubber band around the front here, just to hold it in. Okay, and we can pop this back on in here. One way around. Right, so what we actually have is this bit on the top. Now, looking at, you can probably see on the close-up, maybe that just a touch. As you see, it sits there, it looks quite nice. Only problem is, is obviously when this bit comes on the top, um, and when you look at it, it's about to here, you're only gonna see about half of it from down here. So I'm not so worried about, um, you know, obviously the back part in there, because we can look down and you're not gonna see a great deal in there. So we're not gonna have to worry about walling it off and detailing much beyond this point here. But certainly this area all along the top here is gonna need it. Now, when you look at the reference photo like this one, you can see there's absolutely loads of detail and wiring and everything going on there. But if you look on the old close up up here, we've got big gaps. So in some ways we're gonna to have to take care of that um, either by filling it in with a little bit of plastic art before we go in there um, or just putting loads of wiring in it and things like that. So we're not gonna to worry too much about the bottom half of the engine, if you can imagine, sort of this area back, but certainly this front half is gonna be pretty well detailed. I'm still really, really drawn about having it so it's a lift off to see the entire thing because once we get these um, tanks installed on the side uh, and the water tank on the back end and things like that it's actually going to look quite busy in that entire area so if you did want to take it on um, to having it as a lift off piece like that you know by the time you put these tanks that all go on the side here or these parts like this um, and go down there it's going to look extremely busy and it probably would be a nice touch to have as a lift off so you could see that nice pegasus engine in there but as i said it's something we're not going to worry too much about the back half we're going to concentrate on the front so what we're going to do, or I have been doing, I've been moving on and doing all the little bits and pieces. So obviously we've done the nose wheel and the nose well, that's all ready to go in. Um, but also we've done the main gear well down at the back, which is going to go down there. Um, we've put some flaps together as things were drying um, and ailerons. We've put the tail together, wheels, uh, main gear strut, which is a little bit complicated. Just take your time how all this goes together. Because what actually happens is, if you look at the bottom, you have the feet have the crossover uh, on there. So just take your time. Um, it, it's a shame, actually. I assume there's a gap in the top here of the cylinder um, where there would have been a spring. So it would have actually been a working item. I've dropped mine down just a little bit um, and then I've glued it in place. So it still needs sanding off. I've still got some pegs on here and stuff to take those off. So we can do that one just now and tidy those gear up. And there again, what we're going to do, we're going to make this one a little bit special. So we're going to add um, things like brake lines, bits and pieces on like that. But that's all stuff we'll move on uh, a little bit later on. For the moment, what we can actually do is bring the cockpit areas together. So as I say, we've got this well. Um, we're quite happy of how it is. Now there is a seam that runs down the middle of it. If you wanted to, you could get in there because there is a bit of a hole and get in there and fill it. I'm not gonna worry too much. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of um, uh, like a mask oil in there, which will self-leveling, which will fill that up, which is uh, a quick and easy way to get around that problem. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna fit the uh, main or wheel well in here. So what we'll do, we've got the locating tabs show it its place on that side. So once that's in, what we're going to do, we're just going to pop in a little bit of glue down there, a little bit of glue down that one. Okay, main cockpit, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to whip the seat out because we don't want it getting damaged and full up with horribles and things. So what we can do, we've got that one in there. If we put it on the other side here, so what we do, we just put some glue down in this half, this half, touch in there, touch on the back. Okay, make sure they're all in, lined up with the holes, everything else. The instrument panel might help if we get this in now.
If you line it all up, it all fits perfectly. If you don't, it's a bit of a nightmare. So there we go. Now, on the top here, what we're gonna do in a moment, we're just gonna slide the clear part on um, so it protects that area and then the HUD will go in afterwards. So if you're wondering about that now. So what I'm gonna do is we just get the clear part fitted into there. And then what will happen is these two halves will come together like this. We can tape all this up get it all glued up nice and heavy, generous amount of glue on there, so it's all totally dry. But my main concern about this undercarriage business is pretty much okay. I think we're gonna be okay um, with how this is gonna fit down here, because I'm hoping with a little bit of playing around, it will fit in there and it will give our undercarriage just like that. So I'm not too worried about how that's gonna go. It's quite strong, quite firm and everything else. But I think if I don't glue just this tiny back edge, it will give me enough manipulation to be able to get that in and to peg it quite easily. So what we do, we're gonna get the clear part fitted into that HUD now, get those halves together, and then we can get, get looking at how this engine's gonna go and get these top parts cut out. <coughs> Okay, there we go, one Harrier engine all done, the nice Pegasus. Now, these are all just loose fit at the moment, all these parts, because what we're gonna do is actually paint this up. Now, I know we've spoken about <coughs> at great lengths about different colors to do things and that. So what we've actually got, this is all glued solid together now. So what you've actually got here, are obviously the main uh, engine section itself, um, the portholes, these control rods um, moving through there and underneath, that's glued. The rest of it's loose fix, obviously they're gonna be different colors. Now when you look at the pictures of um, the Pegasus engine, depending which references you look at, there are a multitude of colors. Some of them have them as just being gray, sort of an Admiralty gray standard sort of RAF colors on them. Other of them have them in metal colors. Um, some of them you show real heat blooms on them, some of them don't. Now what I'm assuming, and this is just me assuming, um, is that some of the colors are actually, and the photographs are taken, the ones which are metal color and tend to have heat blooms and that are real engines. The ones where they're sort of painted gray and things like that and look quite smart, they're basically just demo engines or exposed engines to show um, perhaps public ones from photos from museums, things like that. Because we're working um, with this as, you know, technically a more of a, a working type of engine, um, what I'm gonna do is um, we're gonna paint this in the sort of metallic colors and put some heat blooms on it and things like that. Now, normally I'd use owl clouds, but I'm trying to steer away from them. Um, and we're gonna use just all acrylics on this one. So what I'm gonna actually use is Citadels. Now their color metal range, absolutely great. Um, the one of my favorites purely because the fleck, if you like, or the sort of the pigment of the actual metal paint tends to be like flecks, extremely, extremely minute. And you can hand paint these and get a great finish with it. I've seen people do entire aircraft, one thirty second scale, uh, lightnings and things like that in metal finishes with this stuff, and it works a treat. Yeah, the good thing about these, a tub of these, you know, they're quite cheap to buy anyway, but they last forever. But as you can see probably on the close up, the different color range we've got here, they give them funny names, Gold Bum, uh, Gold, um, sorry, sorry, bolt gun metal, can't even speak. Um, you know, really, but as a, if you're looking for sort of cross comparison, that'd be like metallic gray with Tamiya, uh, things like that. Mithril silver um, is a really, really shiny silver. So obviously I'll put that to sort of X11, something like that of Tamiya. And then you've got this one here, which is chain mail, which I tend to think it's more like sort of XF16 or an aluminium type color. So between all three, we hope to sort of bring this to life. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna pop this down here. Okay, so what we're gonna start, we're gonna start with the um, the sort of aluminium-y color as the all over. Then we're gonna pick out some different areas with darker shades, things like that. We're gonna do the compressor fan at the front as well. Um, and then what we'll do, we'll mask that off and spray the inside of this part here white afterwards. But we'll get rid of the, the metal colors if you like. Now, if you use Citadel before, um, you'll know that they thin forever. So they're actually quite a bargain because one of these, when you airbrush them, they really do last quite a long time. They're very hard wearing. And uh, as I say, they, uh, they do last forever. So what I tend to do, grab a paintbrush full into a color cut, give it a good mix. Because it's quite thick stuff, uh, you do, it does go a long way. So mixture, well, there's probably half a mil in there to two brushfuls, and uh, I quite like that mix. That's a nice color. So we just move that out of the way. Okay, let's pop these out of the way a minute. Okay, we check our flow. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is just lightly blow this over. There's no primer on this or anything because really it's quite a, a rough job of how this one is, but we're just gonna whip around it everywhere.
And obviously we're really concentrating on the top more than anywhere else. Okay, so the front end of the compressor fans, we're going to do that in a darker colour. So we'll just go round. Okay, we're going to let this dry off. So we're just cutting to air and dry it down. And you might be able to see it turning silvery already. It doesn't take long to dry this stuff. It's good stuff. Okay, and then back in again. Another coat. And as long as you don't flood the area, make it too wet, it will have an absolutely fantastic silvery finish. So you can see we go nice and silver now. We'll just dry this down again. Pop it down, grab it from a lower point. Okay. Let's go back over one more time. There we go, used up that amount. So we're just cutting to air, dry this back a bit. Just like so. Now you can mask this stuff, you can go as you like right the way over. Okay, so we just stand that there. Right, okay, just close that up. It's quite a quick job on this. So what we're gonna do is just gonna come in with a darker color. So a bit more thinners, half a mil of thinners. Grab that paintbrush again. Okay, in. Another one, and there we go. Now this is the uh, uh, bulk gun metal, which is, I say, about XF56, I suppose, if you had to give a call. Okay, now looking at your references, check your references over. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this freehand, because as I say, it's quite an effect um, to show. But what we're gonna do is just pick out some little areas, some bands of color, if you like. where it looks like it's had different colours. And I know you see that, because obviously it's being metallic, it's quite hard to see. But we've done a band there, just across the middle, just to change its colour. Okay, so then what we do, we've done that one there, so we're just gonna come across here. And we'll do this band here too. Okay, back over the first one. Because what we can do is certain areas, like these activator bars running down, we can actually go around those and paint them up by hand afterwards. But what this is doing is really just changing its colour and just making it a little bit more odd, different, whichever way you want to call it. Okay, then what we'll do is we're just going to come around this back end here and just change the colour of this bit. We're not going to see this, but this is just for effect, if you like. There. Drawing off as we go. Back in with the old paint. Just around. And there we go. I don't know how well you can see that coming to life now, if we just dry it down, flatten it off a bit. Then obviously what you can do, you can darken things up, you can give this a wash, which is another good idea to give it a bit of depth. But as I said, there again, we're really dealing with the top half here. Okay. So there we go, you might see them a little bit better down on here. Um, let's bring the light on this a little bit closer okay there we go hopefully you can see that but say it's dry to touch already we can hold on to it and that gives us our effect like that now we've got to do these other parts so we'll spray these up as well this one here we're going to do in the nice silvery silver color which will be the next one so we'll just spray that up in the light silvers now these tanks down the side here, I've got no references to show me what colour those are. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do those in metal effect as well as being the light, light silver colour. And then what we're going to have to do is obviously spray and prime um, the inside of the bay here. Um, so if you do look through, it looks green as it should be and things like that. So what it is now, I'll just carry on and just spray these other little bits silver as well. Okay, so we're all sprayed silver. 
um, we're all drying, so got the, all the others drying. So what we're going to do is just weather that up. Now, if you haven't used them before, the um, Tamiya Weathermaster set, um, basically it's makeup <laughs> in a modern colour. So what we're going to do, we'll get some of the blue, okay? And all we're going to do is just going to rub it onto your metalwork as you would, just like so. So it gets sort of a blue hint. Then I use the brush end and just blend it. And what that does, it just makes it to a... A, a faint sort of stain of blue on there. So we've done the underside as well, around that area. So we just pop it down a bit here. Now we're not gonna see these so much. This is more just for reference of showing you what I'm doing. And then what you can do, you can do it like that. And if you think you've got a little bit too much on there, just take a cotton bud, got a clean one here, and just give it a wipe. And what you'll end up doing, you'll take a load of it off, as you can see on the end here. And we've got on this bit here. And then what you can do when you've got it on the bud itself, we just bring you in a bit. So for answer, we'll just go here. You can put it on with your, your cotton bud because it's got it lying on there and just give a little bit of a blue hint. And if you want some more, you can put it on with a sponge just in an area, just like that. Okay, and then just come in and give it a bit of a rub. And what that'll do is just blend it in to the surface. And it does it like that. So there we go. It's a quick, easy way. You can see it in there. I've given you that sort of heated bloom type thing and we'll do more on that on other videos but it's just a quick way of doing these things and what you can do you can give the sponge a bit of a rub out to get some of the blue off and then you can grab perhaps we've got this other color here called oil stain okay so we can grab a little bit of that perhaps and what we can do we can just give it a rub around some of these areas up here and it will just give it a slightly grubby look Okay, just like this, and it will just give it a, a slightly, as I say, a rubby look. Now, you don't want to rub this too hard, otherwise, you end up going straight through it. But it's a quick way, just like that, of making it look a little bit dirty, as I say, and weathered up a little bit without having to worry about going in and perhaps doing some more sort of weathering you you know where you've got no return from it's a quick and easy way and you can see where you're going with them but as I say we we'll talk about those in uh, later builds so we just let all this dry off a moment okay so what I've done I've just primed up the inside of these with just a little bit of Tamiya grey anything I had lying around because what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do this um, with interior green now this is Valero stuff and it doesn't like going on neat plastic so if you was like a, using a Tamiya internal green or something like that it would have been fine but I've got a lot of this lying around so we thought we'd use it up as I say, it's very, very watery, um, and it just doesn't like going on stuff on its own. So, being it's Valero Model A, it's pretty thin. Anything with a black top is pretty thin, so you can just spray it. So, what we're going to do, we're just going to spray the entire inside area of the fuselage itself, anywhere that's likely to be seen. And as I say, it's just a quick, random job just so when we have a look at the engine area, anywhere that we might miss will be green as it should be. So that's the plan. So we just give this a couple of coats of this internal green. Um, the color is number 10 model air if you want to do it like this, although there is other people's around for internal green. Um, <clears throat> so there we go, that's those done, just like that. So we just let them dry off a moment, then we can sort of get this together and see what areas we need to detail and we can start making a chop um, and cutting out this top side here. Okay, so now we can, um, we've can we got this together, we can see how it's going to look and as you see, you can probably see in there, it's looking pretty smart, you know, quite happy with how it's all laid out and everything, but what we need to do now is open up this top panel. So basically, as we always say, check twice, cut once. So what we've got here is just an HB pencil and just follow the panel line around to highlight the area where you want to cut, like that, okay? And then basically what you're gonna do is then just cut it. Now the way I do it is just with a knife. Now, all you do, as I, I do, tend to do it, is just literally very lightly to start with, blade quite short, lock it in, not a sharp blade, because otherwise they tend to wander off. But what you can do is literally just start scoring all the way down the panel line. So you just follow it down and then cut all the way through. Then eventually, there's one I did earlier, we end up with the panel comes off and then what will happen very nicely 
is this will hinge up like this revealing the inside of our actual um, intake the actual um, top part of the engine so now we can have a look at and say now this is glued so it's just all a loose bit what we're actually going to see when we have the reveal so we're going to see this area which isn't a massive amount of you know detail in there and everything so that's why we're going to liven it up with wiring but we needed to see what we could see in there um, and how much detail we're actually going to make so what we're going to do i'll continue cutting those out and then what next we're going to do is detail this area make it look quite smart because what we can do is then cover it all up for the moment um, and then obviously we can reveal it here at the end okay so that's the those cut out um quite a tough job it's quite thick plastic in there so just take your time with it but there we go now we can have a look and how it's going to sit and that's what we're going to see through the top with any luck so it does show a little bit of engine obviously we can't see much of it but you know it's going to just liven it up and make it a little bit more exciting for viewers to look at it so next we're going to have to get on with some um, wiring work and just to really liven up this front bay because I've got reference photos that show this total area absolutely crawling with wiring and things like that well obviously we don't have that so we're going to have to make it up as we go a couple of things that we have for that are let's get them out here we've got here lead wire um now this stuff comes in various thicknesses from literally 0.2 which is like hair very very thin very nicely right the way up to sort of um one millimeter uh, thick so it's it's quite thick stuff so that way you can just make either wiring or hoses hydraulic lines and by obviously painting them silver um, and black and things like that you can recreate various bits of wiring and things like that so what I'm going to do I'm going to make a start um, by basically just have a look at the reference photos making a few small little tiny holes poking some wires in drop a super glue and then we can start to thread them around and wire them around and things like that um, and then what I do is I'll come back and I'll explain exactly how I'm doing it in bits and pieces like that Okay, so as you can see, it's a complete mess here, um, but that's part and parcel of actually having a, a sort of scratch building and things like that. You know, you tend to have bits of cable everywhere and things like that. Okay, as you can probably see on the close-up down here, we've actually put in some of the cabling and harnesses and things like that onto here. Now, it looks pretty impressive already just to lighten it all up. And really, if I just give you a couple of um, demonstrations of how I've done a few things... So a lot of this will be on the close-up cam because it's just a bit easier. But as you can see here, we've got a little bit of cable, little fine strands of it. If I just open it up, like you can see here, then all we've done is roughly scrunch them all together. So something like that. Then we come along here with some, we've got some, um, sorry, uh, like one mil um, jammy dog tape, very, very thin. Then all we do is come along stick this in if we just move that camera out a little bit stick it onto it sort of wrap it round so it bites now obviously depending on the thickness you want your little strap to be um, will depend on uh, how much tape you put around it so obviously for a thin part like this you're not going to need much so if i just get my very sharp scissors okay you can come along and once you've got it on just snip it off like that and there we go we've got a little piece on there so if you came along and you wanted to put it on like we've done here you can put it down and it looks just like a tie down onto it which is quite a handy little thing like here we've got obviously which are the master engine controls going forward to the cockpit area they're on in this little area here piping and things like that um little technique that i use obviously everyone sort of has their own little technique but this is my one so if i just show you here what i do we just get some cable like this <coughs> or wire as we've got because it's lead it's extremely easy to bend it into any shape you like and you can form it round things so if you wanted it to go round uh, quite a tight little area easiest thing put a cocktail stick in there okay make a bend okay and you get a very nice straightforward bend like that without being too curvy and things so what i actually do if i just poke one of these in here so we can see um i get bring over a bit of tape something like this i just bring you out a little bit there we go a whole bit of tape down here come along drop a super glue on there not much okay then what i tend to do is if we just cut this down a little bit because we don't want it to be too long okay come along dunk the end in place it down into it okay find where you want it to come out of the actual uh, model something like that okay and then all you do is touch it on if you touch it on and then just hold it there Obviously, what happens is the glue gets pulled onto the actual plastic and onto your, your model. 
Okay, and there you go. You can let go and it's stuck on there. Now, I wouldn't just leave it like that because the chances are it's just going to ping off. What's happening as well is that the um, paintwork has been melted by the glue. So I get a cocktail stick, a tiny bit of glue on the end. Okay, just go along and touch it and it will stick that entire area. Now, you could use a kicker, but I do find if you're using a kicker, it gets a little bit brittle. So what I tend to do is just let it stay, let it dry off naturally, and then we can come back and add more plumbing. Same thing for smaller wires, things like that. The other thing you can do to get sort of that uh, rope effect of wire is just fold a length in half, something like this, okay, and then all we do is twist it together. Very thin stuff here. Twist it together and you get that sort of knotted, twisted effect to the line. And then because you'll have a little loop at one end, if you just bend that loop down, and this is all very, very tiny to see, I know, but if you bend that loop down just a touch, we bring it nice and close here, so you sort of get a little stick on the end, okay? That will stick and obviously give a lot more grip than it would do if you were using just a standard piece uh, of wire because obviously it's got the flat part on it and you won't see any bits coming off of it. So if we just use this one, using a little bit of artistic license here because obviously reference photos for this are a little bit uh, awkward to come by. But all we do, grab some glue anywhere where we want to go in, okay? So we pick an area. Bit more glue. Okay, hold it on there just for a second. Okay, and there we go. We've got that part on there and the job done. And because it's got a flat surface, it sticks on there a lot better. So there we go. That's the basics of adding wiring. And obviously you can go around, then you can bend it how you want it to go and all things like that. And it generally just livens up the area. The other thing you can do is obviously paint some of the cables different colors. Some of them are white, some are yellow. Um, you can put little, some of them black to be hoses and things like that. And by breaking them up, it just gives them an overall sort of better look uh, and effect to them. So there you go, that's pretty much how that's gonna go. Very straightforward, obviously, all the time I'm checking to see how it's going to look, what we're going to see out of here, and obviously it's just gonna be this bit here, so it will just liven it up. The other thing we're gonna to have to do is make some type of bulkhead, because um, when we look at the close-up shot, obviously it finishes about here, um, on the model. Um, so what we need to do is make a bulkhead so it looks like these hoses are going through which then are obviously going to go above the air intake and then going forward to the forward controls and things like that. And obviously there is things like there's like a big hose going through there um, for the nose thruster and things like that. So obviously you know we've got to take care of those and put them in and it will just liven it up. It would have been nice if the door was right over the top of it but unfortunately it's a little bit forward so we need to do it like that. So what I'm going to do is just carry on doing exactly the same thing around and then what we do we'll paint them up, add the little bits of silver perhaps where some of the glues come off things like that and then hopefully we can then just sort of bring this together and we can get these bulkheads in liven up the doors the bottom of the doors in a moment we'll put some stripping on which I'll talk about and some cabling obviously for the electrics for the slime line